Hey guys, Brian here from 5 to Go, coming at you with another gear video, because it is summer 2022, lots of you guys have new RVs that you've picked up in the last few months, and your RV is not ready to go. So I'm gonna run through all the stuff that we have, there's a bunch of stuff you need, there's some stuff that I recommend that you're probably gonna want after watching this, and then we have a couple extra little goodies to sprinkle in throughout the video as well. So. Let's get to it. Before we get started today, I do want to say thank you to our sponsor, Snap Pads. Uh, we've been using Snap Pads on this RV for two years, and they reached out to us a couple months ago and wanted to work with us and give us a discount code for you guys for your own Snap Pads. So thank you to them, and we have Snap Pads down there. We're going to talk about those just a little bit later. As we go through this video, we're going to have everything at these timestamps. We have a bunch of different stuff to talk about, so if you want to skip ahead to a different category like water or outdoor accessories, time codes are here. There's also the chapters below that YouTube puts in, and you can just kind of jump ahead. So let's start talking about sewer. All right, first up is sewer. This is my wet bay, so this is where all of the sewer stuff comes in. Uh, because I'm going to be talking about dirty things, I'm going to talk about my number one gear when dealing with sewer. Gloves. I know a lot of you guys don't use gloves. That's a personal choice. Let's use gloves, guys. Uh, so I like these. They're nice and grippy on the palms, and then they're completely waterproof all the way around. They have a stretchy cuff. These are just in case. I am not touching poop every single time I do black tank stuff, but as you'll see in a second, some of this stuff gets pretty dirty and you have to manipulate it. So gloves are number one, not number 10, number one. Um, so my black tank stuff goes in here. I have a bunch of uh, yummy little accessories in here and then I have this guy here so you guys know about sewer hoses right there's these normal sewer hoses I recommend having at least two of these 10 foot long ones if not three of them it's all gonna depend on where your hookups are because there's no such thing as a standard campground so your black tank hookup might be way back there might be way up there you never know so you want enough hose to be able to reach where you have to go this lovely beauty here is a flush king. Uh, if you ever have anything backed up at the outlet end of your black tank, this allows you to hook the hose up, hook up a garden hose, which would be my black tank flush hose over there, and blast water in through the bottom and dislodge whatever's in there. And then you open this gate and everything comes rushing back through. This is not a cheap device, but it's a lot cheaper than a mobile RV tank. So in here I have a bunch of extra things. Uh, our current campground, the, um, the inlet into the ground has threads on it over there, so it is threaded in, so I don't need any extra stuff. If you have a campground that does not have a threaded sewer inlet, you're going to need some sort of donut or rubber something. I like this one, it fits with the Camco stuff and it kind of makes a nice big seal. It turns these threads into big rubber things and you can kind of jam it down in there. Um, this one here is just kind of a generic donut. Sometimes you'll have a really big hole that you need to fill. This goes inside and kind of causes it to like bulge outwards to make a seal. Uh, the reason you want this is because sewer gases are real and they don't smell good. This is a just a clear section of pipe. Uh, I just have this just in case. It's nice to be able to see what's going through. <clears throat> and this guy here uh, sometimes your sewer hookups in the ground will be below grade or there will be some other weird vertical thing going on. So what this lets you do is attach to this part and then your hose goes on top so it gets you out of the ground. I use this probably about once a month actually. And then the final thing in my dirty tote is this little thing here. It's called a hose blaster. This goes on to the end of a sewer hose, just kind of snaps into the lugs. And then my black tank flush hose goes here and you can open it and close it. And this just kind of blasts water through the hose. It's a good way to flush out your hose without doing anything with the RV. You can just do it at a dump station. I like the Rhino stuff. Um, I'm gonna have Aaron point down there at the uh, elbow here. We've been RVing for five years now. I've never had a Rhino hose fail, so I like them. Um, this clear elbow, that is key. Up on the other end, I also have a clear elbow because you want to see what's coming out and you want to make sure it's all making it through the tube. This is also part of my required list. Uh, one of these, this is called a Sidewinder. It just gets your hose up off the ground. That's required by law in some states. Uh, a lot of campgrounds require it. It also allows you to create a nice 
sloping downhill so everything flows nicely. Um, there are uh, some proponents of what I call the P-trap method, which is where you let the hose hang off and create a little water trap. It's not necessary with RVs because everything in here either has uh, water traps or it has valves or it has gaskets. If you have smells coming inside from your black tank, that's some other kind of problem and a little P-trap isn't gonna fix that. All right, so I forgot about a couple other things. Let me put my gloves back on. Um, so you, you will have clogged toilets. Um, most RVs have foot flush toilets. We have a foot flush toilet in our half bath, which is right about here. And in the back of the rig, we have what's called a vacuum flush toilet. I don't wish one of those upon you, but if you have one, Google and Facebook groups are your friend. Uh, so with this middle one here, it's just a normal foot flush. If you haven't seen RV toilets before, what a foot flush toilet is, is it doesn't fill up with water and then you hit a little handle and it flushes water through like a residential toilet does. What this does, is it has a very minimal amount of water, you do what you need to do, and then you push down on the foot pedal, water comes in, the gate opens, everything falls through, you let go of the pedal, a little bit of water sits and creates a seal to keep smells out. Those will clog. It, it's just gonna happen. Um, and it's going to clog down below, probably because there's an elbow that turns to get into your black tank. And when that happens, there's two things that you can try and do. Um, I've tried plungers and just the way it works, it's not like a residential toilet, it just doesn't work as well. Uh, what I have used is these two things. Uh, this is one of the black tank flush wands. If your RV does not have a black tank flush inlet, like this one here, this is where you would hook up a hose and then inside the tank there's actually these little uh, nozzles like this that are installed that blast water around. This is made for RVs that don't have those. Uh, it also is good for getting stuff to run through the pipes from up above. So you know, I just run a hose through that window and then around into the bathroom to this, shove this through and let it do its thing. Um, if it's too much of a clog, which unfortunately happened two months ago, I also have a residential um, who's he what's it? <laughs> it's one of these guys with the big screw thing on the end and I just kind of shove it down in there and push it through and turn the crank and hope for the best. And honestly, that worked great. Uh, also out here, we can, we can get rid of the gloves now until I put all this stuff away. Also out here we have my black tank flush hose. Uh, like I said, this is a black tank inlet for a flush. I also use this hose for anything dirty like this wand here. If I need to run water through the sewer hose with that little blaster we talked about a minute ago, if I need to hook up to a dump station water supply to run the flush, or if there was some kind of spillage and I want to clean up after myself, I have this hose for that. This is not for potable or potable water, however you say that. This is not for drinking safe water. This is for any water supply that's out there. And it is completely different looking from my normal water hoses, and uh, that's why. And the final thing I have for sewer stuff is a, kind of an interesting little thing. Whenever we have it out and people walk by and see it, or you know, if someone sees it in a video or a photo, they're like, what is that thing? Um, what I'm talking about is uh, this funny looking little dude here. Uh, basically what it is, uh, is it's a water container. It's a water jug. It just happens to look like a little RV. Uh, what this is for is if you have a sewer hookup that is not threaded, if the hose is just sitting in there and you pull your black tank and all of a sudden you have all this water rushing through and blasting in, it's going to try and get out. The hose it has nothing to hold on to. So what you do with this, you see it has this nice kind of uh, cutout in the bottom. You fill this with water and you set it down on top of the, uh, the elbow that's going into the ground and this provides enough resistance for when all that water comes rushing through, it'll keep the hose from popping out. So it's basically a sewer weight. Aaron wanted me to show how this goes on. Uh, it doesn't really go on this one because it has a nice standing pipe, but you would fill this with water and kind of put it like that, however it fits to keep the end down, but it fits in there. That's, that's the whole point of this. And the reason I like this over uh, there are companies that make sandbags and other weights that you can drape on. The nice thing is, is this weighs nothing. You fill it with water and it gets heavy. And when you're done with it, you empty it out and you're not carrying around just a bunch of extra weight because weight can be an issue in RVs. All right, now we're going to talk about water, which is a lot faster than sewer and a lot less complex, I promise. 
basically you need a hose, you need some filtration of some sort, because campground water is weird, uh, and you also need some pressure regulation of some sort as well. So let's talk about pressure regulation first. You're gonna see these a lot. Uh, I used to like this. Uh, it is what's called an adjustable pressure regulator. It would go in here somewhere, so between the spigot and your filter and your hose. Um, as you can see with this one, the dial is permanently on 70. Um, that's because it's broken. And this is actually the third one that has broken on me. I've tried three different brands. All three have failed at some point. So I am no longer using that one. Now I just use one of these inline ones that is permanently set to, I think, 50 PSI, 40 to 50. You'll see these on the counter at any RV store. It'll just be like a little bin. They're like five or six bucks. I like those. They're easy. They're out of the way and they don't fail like these ones do. Also over here, um, this is the filtration I'm currently using. I know it's not the best, but we don't drink the water from here. This is just for showers, washing dishes, uh, flushing toilets, that sort of stuff. Uh, for drinking water, we do do water bottles and we've been looking into other systems and maybe some better filtration. More on that later. In terms of hoses, this is the Zero G hose. I absolutely love the Zero G hose. Why is it so cool? Well, if you've ever dealt with a garden hose or like these Camco RV no kink hoses, they're great when it's warm, but as soon as it gets cold, they are like rigor mortis sets in. So the Zero G hose is fantastic because it is completely bendable and pliable. When I go to put it away, I can just run it around my arm like an extension cord. There's no fighting with it. It is not no kink. It will kink up on you, but I will deal with that over having to wrestle a super cold RV hose in the winter time. So zero G hose, zero G hose, zero G hose. Otherwise, uh, just a couple little extra things. I do have a splitter. I like putting my splitter directly on the spigot and this allows me, I almost blew water on myself. Uh, I can turn these valves to open water different ways. I like this because then I can put my flush hose on here or I can fill buckets for the kids or do anything else I need to do with this without having to disassemble everything else. So a splitter out here is handy. This just kind of is my standard kit when I attach to a campground water supply. Okay, so rounding out the trifecta of sewer water power is power, the electrical system. Uh, this is even simpler than water. Basically, I have a uh, surge protector. I've got the Power Watchdog, which is a 50 amp surge protector and it has Bluetooth capability so I can see all the power that it's using. And if there's any kind of irregularity with campground electricity, or there's a lightning strike, or any number of things, this guy will either intercept it or it will take the bullet. We have a 50 amp rig, and um, this is 50 amps as well. This campground has a 50 amp plug. If you have a 50 amp rig or a 30 amp, and you get to a campground that doesn't have the plug for your RV, you're gonna to wanna to carry around some adapters. So, I've got two different ones here. Uh, these are both 50 amp female, because the plug coming out of the rig is always going to be a male. And then on the other end, this one is a 30 amp male. So if we get to a campground that doesn't have 50 amp service, I plug my power watchdog into here, and I plug this into the post. So I only have 30 amps, but the adapter lets me run off of that. This one, as you can see, looks like a normal extension cord outlet. Uh, basically, we use this if we're visiting friends and we're in their um, driveway and we just need a little bit of electricity, you know, just to keep the fridge on, to run some fans, power up laptops and all that. Uh, you might be able to run one AC unit off of a, uh, a normal extension cord if you have a nice beefy like 20 amp extension cord and they have a good outlet. Uh, but in general, you're probably not going to be running air conditioning off of this, but uh, it is good for like I said, keeping the lights on, keeping food cold and all that. Uh, so this again is a 50 female to a 20 or 15 amp male. Uh, these also come in 30 amp versions where you would have the female side of this. And then I guess this one would be 30 female to 50 male and 30 female to 15 slash 20 male. I will have links to all of this in the description down below. Okay, while I have this bay open, uh, this is where my electrical stuff is, but there's a nice spot in here for something else. Uh, we're gonna start talking about leveling and campsite setup. And in here, I have a stack of these yellow uh, leveling blocks. And basically how these work is if your rig, if you roll into a campground and uh, it's super unlevel, you're gonna need 
these come in packs of 10. I know some people that carry on 20 of these, uh, but you're gonna need at least one stack of these because what this lets you do is you can kind of build uh, little ramps. I don't know if I can do this hanging out midair. Let's see if I can do this without getting down on the ground. There we go. So you can build little pyramids that will get you up several inches. You can also do another level to get up three. Um, when we had our travel trailer, because for those of you that don't know, we've been RVing for about five years now, and we've been full-time for more than four of those years. Our first RV was a travel trailer, and leveling those when you pull into a site, you have to basically put these or some other type of leveling block under the wheels to get level side to side. And then front to back, you use the uh, jack up front to go up and down front to back. Uh, for fifth wheels, you're going to have legs that come down probably in four corners, if not six different points. Um, those you probably will also need these because when you are leveling your rig uh, on motorhomes and fifth wheels with hydraulic or electric leveling systems, you don't want your tires to come off the ground and just hang in the air. You don't want your suspension having all that weight pulling the wrong direction for long periods of time. So what you're going to do is if you are leveling a fifth wheel or when we level this motorhome, if wheels start coming off the ground, what we will do is we will run past that point and we will build, you know, we'll put one under, we'll do the little triangle, we'll do whatever we need to do under those wheels that are gonna come off the ground, then we drop it back down and then we re-level so that wheel is sitting on here. Uh, there's a little accessory with these. If you really wanna make it nice, that just snaps on and makes it flat. Um, I also have another use for these. Let's say this was here and the ground was right here. This is gonna be hanging out and the hose is gonna be kinked like this. So what I'll do is I'll take a stack of blocks and put it like this, and then the hose can just kind of come out and not be kinked. I also will use these sometimes if my sidewinder under my sewer hose has like a dip that goes down, I will just use you know one or two of these to fill that dip just so it's a nice smooth uh, downhill. So these are actually very versatile for more than just doing things with your tires. While we're on the subject of campground setup stuff, let's talk about today's sponsor, Snap Pads. They are a fantastic tool that lets you permanently attach a big, chunky, heavy-duty rubber pad to the bottom of leveling legs. If you don't have something like that and you start running your legs down into the ground, you're gonna punch holes in the ground, or as you sit there, things are gonna level and you're gonna sink if it's wet or muddy or sandy. Also, if you're on gravel or on asphalt or concrete, there's a good chance that it could slide, or if it's fresh asphalt, it could actually damage the asphalt. So these big rubber pads, they give you more surface area that keeps you from sinking. It gives you a little bit more grip, keeps you from sliding, and you don't have to carry around more blocks and all sorts of stuff. And also, fifth wheels, the, the legs tend to be out a little bit so you can access them, but with motorhomes, they've tucked those suckers way under there. So if you have blocks that you're putting under there, you're basically crawling on the ground every time you wanna put the blocks in or pull them back out. So like I said earlier in the video, we have been using our snap pads for two years now. They were one of the very first things we installed on this RV. We have absolutely loved having them. So when they reached out to us a couple months ago, we were super excited because we love their product. We've been telling everybody about it. So now you guys get a discount code, so bonus. So if you go to their website at the URL below and enter in this promo code 52GO10, it's the number two and the number 10, you'll get 10% off. And if you're like us and you have the absolute largest feet that they support and you get the absolute most expensive set, that 10% is gonna be nice. So go to their website, do 52GO10 to get 10% off and you too can have awesome snap pads that we love and you'll love them too. Alrighty, now let's talk about some outdoor accessories. Uh, first up, we have something you probably have not seen before. You've seen outdoor fire pits, but this is a brand new one that this company sent to us this year to check out. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to use it as much as we wanted to, but it's super cool, so we wanted to talk about it anyway. We were looking for a small propane fire pit, and those are surprisingly hard to come by. They're either super expensive, or they're not as small as we wanted, or they're just kind of a one-trick pony where all it does is create heat. This is called a trail fire. Not only is it a propane fire pit, it is also a grill, and you can cook with this huge wok that's on top, and you can even use it as a pizza oven, which we haven't tried yet. So what I really like about this is this big wok thing on top is actually the lid. I mean, look at, you could do like almost a proper paella in this thing. It's huge. 
So it's and it's got nice uh, heat resistant, you know, the springs on the handle so it doesn't get hot. And it is just an absolutely massive cooking surface. So when you are traveling, this is the lid. And if you're using it in pizza oven mode, this is also the lid. And then inside it has a grill grate that is food safe. So you can grill steaks directly on this or burgers or whatever you want, or you can just take this off and just use it as a fire pit. So we unfortunately have not been able to use it much uh, in Utah. It was way too windy and cold in California. There were fire bans all over the place, even propane fire pits, because they have been gotten really scared with the fire seasons the last couple of years. And then as we've come north up the West Coast, it's been raining on us for four weeks straight. So we finally got a nice day where we can record this video for you guys. Maybe we'll break this out later tonight. All right, so again, Trail Fire, very cool product. Also over here is one you've probably seen around campgrounds. This is a wagon that folds up to this size so you can just kind of chuck it into a bay and take it with you. Uh, these are super cool. We actually had one of these before we even owned an RV because it was so handy. Uh, basically, it just pops out like that and you're good to go. The Littles used to, uh, we used to put both of our small kids in here and walk around campgrounds. Uh, we've actually used this for trick-or-treating. It's a great place to put your excess candy so you can have empty bags for the next set of houses. Um, we also use this for laundry. If the laundromat is, you know, a good walk away, put your laundry in here and you uh, just take it over to the laundromat and do your stuff. All right, so over here on the campsite of the RV, we have all of these bays and a bunch of random stuff. So we're going to do a lightning round. So let's see if Aaron can keep up with me. In here, I've got the Bayer air pump. This is an RV specific one. It has a bunch of extra hoses that lets you reach really far. And it also goes up to, I think, 120 PSI. Uh, I do know it's enough for these motorhome tires and for trailer tires. I also have tools. I have three different tool things. Um, this is my hand tools. I have an electrical tools and then I have a big toolbox over there that has sockets and all of that stuff. In the next bay, we have a collapsible ladder. And as you can see on one of our recent shorts here, that collapsible ladder is awesome. It lets me get up anywhere I need to and it also packs down and stores right here in this bay. Oh. Let's do the propane. This is our propane tank. If you have a fifth wheel or travel trailer, your propane tanks are somewhere else. But for this one, I did install a quick connect right there. So if you have a quick connect already for your grill, you're good to go. If you have a tank like this, you can put one in line right there. Up in this bay, we were talking about cooking earlier. This is where my black stone lives. I'm not pulling it out because it's covered in things. What is it covered in? We have a collapsible side table, handy for just throwing between chairs. We also have a collapsible, uh, where are we at? Trash bag. You just put a bag in here for when you're cooking outside, keep everything nice and clean. Uh, we've also got extension cords because you know that you don't have power everywhere you need. We're not going in this one because it's just supplies. And then up here, we've got our outdoor mat. Uh, this is a big, large, lightweight, breathable outdoor mat. It will not kill grass. Water does not stand on it. It all goes through. Uh, we didn't put it out here because when we pulled in, this place was literally a mud hole and we didn't want to get it filthy. So that rides in here. We also have a bin of toys. They're not mine. Um, and They're then... mine. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Uh, and then we also have one of these, like the big scrubby outdoor mat. So it's kind of like a scrub here. And then we have the one installed on the stairs. Scrub there and then you go inside. Aaron just reminded me that I skipped right over the chairs. So, in here, past all this random junk, we've gone through five different types of chairs, and uh, I think we're gonna stick with these for a while. Uh, they don't pack down super small like our last chairs did, uh, but they fold in half nicely enough, and they actually have like a little rocker system here, which is nice, because when I'm sitting in a chair, I kind of fidget a little bit, so in this, I can just rock a little bit, right? All right, and my final accessory is one of my personal favorites. That's gonna be Starlink. If you don't know what Starlink is, it, it is a satellite-based internet access system, and uh, it is way faster than any cell service out there, and it is now coming with portability. There's an RV version. We'll have more on that in a future uh, videos, or you can go back through a couple of our shorts and see uh, more information about that. Okay, lightning round is over uh, with a minor in interruption from number three there. Um, hopefully you guys found some new information or some new gear that you wanna check out. Links to 
pretty much everything that I could possibly link to are in the description down below this video. Uh, you can also go to 5 togocom slash Amazon. That will take you to, uh, it's not our storefront, but it is a collection of lists. They call it a storefront, uh, where it's a bunch of lists we put together of all these different types of gear gathered up in these nice handy lists where you can see everything that we use and recommend. So 5 togocom slash Amazon. If you have any questions about anything, join us on Discord. It's 5 togocom slash Discord. Uh, we are answering questions with shorts and TikTok videos, as I'm sure you've seen recently. So if you have any questions, drop them down below here, put them on Discord, you can email them to us however you want to get them to us, and we might respond to them on video and show you a little bit more in-depth about what we're talking about. So thank you again to our sponsor for the entire summer, RV Snap Pads. If you want to get your set of Snap Pads for 10% off, do the discount code 52GO10 at rvsnappads.com and that will get you 10% off of awesome snap pads. And if you want to get behind the scenes and see a lot more extra stuff, we've got a bunch of private channels on Discord for our Roadrunners, which are what we call our patrons. Uh, they also get live streams and extra videos. They see a bunch of different photos and stuff. We put that on Discord. And we're actually camping with two other Roadrunner families right now and a, a bunch more for 4th of July. So if you want to get in on that and you want to camp with us anytime, we share our entire route so you guys can meet up with us along the way. So that's 5 to go.com slash Roadrunner runners if you want to check that out. And I think that's it. So we will see you in the next episode. Have a good one.